Hi Floss Tube, my name's Michelle and welcome to My Creative Mayhem. <laughs> now normally on my channel I do diamond painting, unboxings, and tips and, and tricks and framing and all sorts of things. But recently I have jumped on the cross stitching bandwagon and floss tube. I love it. Absolutely love it. I am hooked. I'm talking hook, line, and sinker. Now, the way that I got into it was through a really good friend of mine, Marissa, at the Crafty Heifer, which I will leave all of her information down below so that you can find her and um, either get on her for it or thank her. I'm not sure which right now. But seriously, she was after me to get into cross stitching. She just knew I would love it, and I was very resistant at first. And then everything happened with the virus and we were stuck at home. And I honestly, I just needed something to calm myself, to relax. And she decided she was going to push me down that rabbit hole and stick a manhole cover over it because that's exactly what she did. <laughs> so, <laughs> but don't send help because I'm, I'm really making a home down there and I'm kind of liking it. <laughs> So thanks a lot, Crafty Heifer, for, you know, expanding my horizons. <laughs> she told me about floss tube. She started her own floss tube. Uh, another friend of mine, Rachel Ray, she also was doing floss tubes. So, uh, you know, I it, it was only just a matter of time before I had to give in. But a little bit about myself. I live in North Central Ohio and I am married. I have two wonderful children. They are both grown. One has a small little family down in Florida, so I do have a grandbaby. So hi, it's Mia. <laughs> and my son and daughter-in-law are just making their path in this world, and they're doing wonderfully down there. And then my daughter graduated high school last year, so she's in her first year of college, which has been quite the experience for her. And she will start again soon next month. So now, one of the things I did, I just started last month. So I am totally new to this. And I thought, you know, I'm not sure if I have a lot to bring to the table. But this is kind of a unique situation with everything going on in the world. And I really thought if someone else came after me and was wanting to start in a cross stitch but couldn't go out to the cross stitch stores couldn't go out and look at fabric and learn all these things i thought what better way to document it and if it just helps one person i'm okay with that so i hope that you continue with me on this journey and how i'm learning and yeah let's get started so first of all i told you how i got started because of marissa and i'm kind of looking at my notes down here because i have a memory of a gnat and i don't want to forget anything <laughs> And honestly, I don't know what I went over because I've reshot this quite a few times. We've had the neighbor start mowing the lawn. We've had a marauding pack of raccoons devour our seed in the backyard. So I'm out there like a crazy lady trying to make some noise to scare them away. And what else? Um, oh, the male lady came. So <laughs> I, I'm just going to start from the top. Um, and then, okay, here is the elephant in the room. I did not start out the proper way. Don't be upset with me. I know, start out on Ada, start out on a lower count. But the more floss tube I watched, the more I figured out what my style was. And my style, I love, oh my goodness, Country Stitchers and Liz and Deb. Oh my goodness, their style are right up my alley. Like Deb, she is so creative in how she does her charts you know she'll put in things that are meaningful to her she'll put in different stitches and that i just caught that creativity bug and you have a little bit more creative leeway than you do in diamond painting in the way that you can stitch your project in the fabric that you can put behind it and then also in the finishes so i've learned a lot i mean i was like a sponge on all of these youtube channels absolutely a sponge so if you're starting out just like me the one of the first things i did um, was number one, I went to floss tube and I started learning. So one of my hurdles was the fabric. I couldn't figure out the fabric and I was asking Marissa all kinds of questions. And at this time she was just learning as well. So I went to Peacock and Fig and again, I'll link anything that, you know, any uh, channel that I mentioned, I will link below. But I went to Peacock and Fig. She has a wonderful tutorial on the different kinds of fabric. So 
Ada versus even weed versus uh, linen and what the differences are. And so she really lays it out for you and um, what all those differences are. And that was super helpful. So I knew from my style and from what I liked that I loved linen. I loved the look of it. I loved, I, I thought I would love the feel of it because again, I didn't have any. So I started out on 36 count linen. I know that that's not normal, but I knew that that was something I would love. And I was really concerned with everything going on again about getting the product. So yeah, I wanted to learn on how to stitch on the linen. So I started searching on YouTube and I saw a video on the Fat Quarter Shop. So Priscilla and Chelsea, thank you so much because she did, they both did a video on how to stitch on linen and that was super, super helpful. So if you want to learn the linen and you're just getting started like me, go ahead and watch that video. It was awesome. Then I saw Julie cross stitch on her channel and she taught me, cause I knew that if I did linen, the pattern that I chose, which I'll show you in just a second, was supposed to be over two. So I learned how to stitch over two from Julie cross stitch. So now I have the linen, then I have how to stitch on the linen. So I picked this pattern and I fell in love with Madame Chantilly. And so here's the pattern that I chose. And I will probably insert because my camera does not autofocus. So I will go ahead and do a beauty shot. <laughs> getting all these technical terms here. I will go ahead and do a shot of this and insert it. But this is a beautiful, beautiful pattern. And so um, it, I used the called for linen, which I will get out here for you. Uh, I went to one, two, three stitch. And what I really, really liked about it was when you order a pattern from one, two, three stitch, they will go ahead and have a drop down and they will add in if it's available that they'll, they'll add in the called for linen and i saw that it was 36 count it was white edinburgh so um and it was a linen fabric piece they already like measured it and everything so i didn't have to do any of that and that was 13 by 18. so i went ahead and got that and then i went ahead and got the called for threads and i used uh, i do believe i i didn't make any substitutions except for maybe the white i used um blanc instead of let's see instead of the white, which I think is the same because it's just the French name for white. So uh, I used all of the called for threads. And oh, one thing I also did was, um, you know, when you first get your patterns and you first get your floss, you're like, okay, how do I store these? And I did the bobbin and I tried it out and I got the little container and I, I wasn't very happy with the bobbins. And I think it's because it puts a crinkle in the uh, floss when you wind it and then unwind it. So for me, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If you love that, for me, I just didn't like that. And so I thought, okay, I've seen the thread drops that they've been making. And I wasn't sure if I would like that either. And I didn't want to go out, you know, again, virus not going out. I didn't want to go out and get them. So I, I am a big believer in using what you have around your house and, and using it in a different way. So I was a big scrapbooker back in the day and I have a ton of photo paper. I don't print many photos uh, anymore. So the photo paper has just been sitting there and I had thoughts of just giving it away, but I'm so glad I didn't because I went ahead and designed uh, some thread drops. So you can see them here. And again, I'll put a shot in so you can zoom in. But I designed these thread drops to be printed and then I just hand cut these out. Now, if you want to go ahead and get the PDF, I just have them you know, in a row and I filled up the entire uh, page with it. And then you can print them and cut them out if you like, if you wanna try it out and see if you like them. Now. They've been holding up pretty well. I will most likely go ahead and just get the thread drops that you can purchase. But again, I just didn't want to uh, do that unless I knew that I liked it. So I'll have the link below. You can go to my website and download it. But anyway, this is, uh, so this is the Rose Village pattern. And then here are the called for flosses. And so this is just DMC. Aren't they beautiful? 
We've got some blues in there and I don't have enough rings yet. I need to get rings for my floss. But look at all of these colors, pinks and light blues. And I just love them. Absolutely love them. And so here is what I have done. And I need to get some um, backing board and a little clips and be like all profesh, but this is how far I have gotten on it. So if you can see, I just started the little house over here and I'll put some shots in for you again, but I just love it. Look at those little houses. <laughs> it's so cute. Now, the other thing that I learned while doing this is this white linen, probably not the best, you know, to be starting out on, but it um, is a little bit see-through. So, you know, there again, I've got it on the, on the back of that. And I knew that if I carried my thread and then I got this mounted and framed, that it would definitely be an issue. So I needed to learn how to hide my stitches on the back. So what I did was I went over to Needlebug, Needlebug channel. Karen, thank you so much. You were a godsend. So you taught me how to do the pin stitch, darling. Thank you. Thank you so much because I started to do that so that you would not see my thread on the back. So here is my back. Now, I did carry some thread over on, let's see, on this tree over here. So this is my back. But the little tree over here I did carry over because you couldn't see it and I guess I was getting lazy. So, you know, hey, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> but I do have, you guys probably already know this, but I do have a little um, tip for you when doing the houses. I found out that I'm not as good of a counter as what I thought I was. Like, you know, you would think, oh, counting is easy. Yeah, not so much. I frogged so much. And that's one thing. If you start out on linen, be prepared to frog. Frog is going to be your best friend. <laughs> Just do it slowly <laughs> because you don't want to mess up your linen. But I kind of knew that going in, so I was prepared. But on these houses, I start out with outlining my windows. And the reason I do that is because you'll know right away if your window is like up one line or down one line or is not quite straight, uh, you'll know right away. And so you won't be so far in the house that you can't correct it. So I outline the window first, just a little square in the outline first and do this for these houses. It's the white part. And then I fill in the rest of the house because if I fudge and I get off a little bit, you know, you can always put in a little bit more grass or you can put in, you know, a little bit more of the wall and you can make it even around the windows. Now the first one I didn't do and I kind of had to fudge it a little bit. So there is a mistake on this one right here, but I just added in another row of um, like the bottom part there. And so I, and it works for me. I didn't want to frog anymore. So, <laughs> and I love these little flowers over here. That was really fun to do. So this is my very first project and I absolutely love it. I love it, you guys. Okay. So that's how I learned to do that. And then while I'm stitching, I love to watch floss tube. Like it is absolutely amazing. So I want to give a shout out to Nisi Lynn. You are a hilarious girl. I absolutely love your channel. Keep it up. And I love your projects. It's just amazing. Like you keep me company. Like we, <laughs> I could totally see us going out for coffee. <laughs> That's kind of presumptuous, but hey. And then also Georgia Girl Stitching. I started watching her and she's brand new, you know, not very long and I love her stuff. And she, she had her mom on there and I love that. Uh, so, and, and um, her mom started making bags. And the reason why I mentioned Georgia Girl is because she was talking about her local needlework store. And I was like, okay, she sounds like she met some amazing people there. I want to check out our local needlework shop. And so I went up to the craft gallery in Finley, Ohio. I am from the Northern Ohio region. And uh, that's our local needlework shop. One of them that I know of. I'm sure there's more in the area, but again, I'm so new to all of this, but um, we went up there and I fell in love. I fell in love. Paula and Carlton 
are such sweet souls and I'll have a little bit if you, uh, I'm gonna go over some haul that I got from them, but I'm gonna have, uh, they allowed me to video while I was in there because I kind of knew I wanted to start floss tube. So they allowed me to video and so I have clips of their fabric and their floss and a, a little bit in between. And I mean, I was overwhelmed but excited all at the same time. And Paula and Carlton were so helpful. I was in there for quite a few hours. Paula showed me how to do the um, um, loop stitch method, I think it was, to start. And then I quickly forgot about it because then Marissa told me how to do it again. And then I was like, oh yeah, that's what Paula was telling me about. Guys, I have a memory of a nap, seriously. <laughs> I'm just a hot mess. I'm just a hot mess. Um, and then Carlton spent hours with me uh, going over fabric. So just since I'm on fabric, here's kind of the things that I got. This is a 36 count Weeks Dye Works, and this is in platinum. And I know the lighting isn't the best, but I love this. I love the feel of it. I love the color. That's 36 count there. I think that's kind of more what the color is. 36 count Weeks Dye Works Platinum. And then I also wanted to try Lugana because I've never tried that, obviously. <laughs> uh, this is Ice Blue Lugana and this is 28 count. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that. Oh, so, so sweet. And I got this specifically to work on a project, but I've changed my mind. We do that a lot, right? Right, we do that a lot, okay? And then I also got, um, I am so sorry for all the clips, but my camera keeps saying that it stops. So I, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But anyway, so I got this 26 count uh, natural by Weichel, 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 I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's got this like orange kind of border on the end. So if anyone actually knows if, if this truly is, because like I said, it didn't have the tag or I lost it, which that's probably more like it. <laughs> Because, you know, I'm just a hot mess. So, anyway, so this is the natural color. So, I didn't really get anything dyed other than that week's one. And, uh, I mean, I just love these. Absolutely love these. So, I have kit up um, of quite a few projects because I have been in the haul mode. So, this might be where we go over the haul. <laughs> so... Some of the projects I have kitted up. Now this one I am doing with Marissa at the Crafty Heifer. We are going to be doing the uh, Jolly July. And I have gone down the over dyed floss rabbit hole too. You know, there's a room down there in that hole. And yeah, uh, so <laughs> I have joined the um, Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. I'm getting the, um, I think it's called the not natural but the, it's the vintage one where you get the six skeins per month and so i've pulled actually while we're talking about that one let me show you i did get some i got may and i got june and these are gorgeous you guys gorgeous let's see some of, i can't remember which one's which because i put them all in the bundle but this is barely orchid and again i'll probably insert shots in between on the video and this one's dark cherry. Oh, so pretty. Uh, this one is Russian wine. And I love the names too, like seriously. Uh, prim cupboard. Look at that. Come to me, baby. <laughs> and this one's squash. That's gonna be great for Halloween. And let's see, this one is Spooky Lavender Mist. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. And Old Wood Fence. Oh, I love it. I love it. And Wheat Grass. So that's kind of some of my, I did not get that at the, uh, the craft gallery, but I did um, join the club for that one. And then if you're oh if you're wondering i'm all over the place i'm so sorry so this is my floss and this is just all dmc that i went ahead and put on my drops and i just love how it looks on the ring so 
there's that. Um, while I was at the craft gallery though, I also picked up a few skeins of specialty thread. I did, um, <laughs> Paula talked me into getting silk thread. She said, if you go silk, you'll never go back. So I did get dinky dyes. This one is, does it say shades of wine? Yes, there's a theme. <laughs> I may like my one. Now this is a little bit brighter. It's not exactly true to color, but I'll, again, I'll put the image in for you. So I got that and I did pick up a ruby slipper as this was a called for thread in one of my uh, patterns that I wanted to do. I actually changed my mind on this and I'm going with a different thread, but this is variegated and it's so, so pretty. So I did pick those two up now. On to some things that I kitted up. The first project that we're gonna, um, that I'm going to show you is a project that I'm doing with the Crafty Heifer. And she and I are going to be doing Snow Village um, it, for the Jolly July. Now, you guys have seen the Snow Village. I took some cues from the Country Stitchers, Deb. One of the first videos that I actually saw, she showed how she took some villages and put them in a, in a line instead of in the grid pattern. And I absolutely loved it. And then I, um, Marissa was telling me about the snow village and how she really liked it. And so I'll show you the pattern here. We have this one and that is the Country Cottage Needleworks Frozen Hot Chocolate Shop. You've probably seen this one. But I picked that one up in the Snowflake Stand. That one as well. And the Popsicle Cart. And I'm getting three more. They just haven't come in yet. But instead of doing them in the regular pattern, I'm going to do them in a row just like Deb did because I absolutely loved it. And I loved this one because it came on that blue. It showed the picture as being on this blue background. So that's where the ice blue fabric came in. But when I went to Craft Gallery, I saw that they had done the Snow Village, but they had done it in the natural. And I had also seen Glitter Village that another friend of mine uh, she was going to be doing it's actually Marissa's sister. She's going to be doing it with us She was going to do glitter village and I loved that one because I saw that one as well And I thought I'm going to do that one next and I'll just kind of do like a series of them But I was so inspired at the craft gallery because they had done the snow village, but they had done it in the natural and then here is my conversion of the floss now I did get the snow village um, floss pack and what I did was I went ahead and wrote the conversion down of all of the uh, DMC flosses Be because I changed the background I did not go with what their conversion was for Snow Village. I wanted to do the vintage vibe so I picked from my overdyed flosses in my DMC and this is what I came up with. I have 822 which is a DMC floss. I have 902. Isn't that pretty? Um, I have, this is one of the new DMCs that, what, that this did come in the pack. So I did keep this one. This was 08. I have 935. 644, the Blanc for white, the 3866, which is kind of like a cream color. And then the specialty threads I chose were Gentle Art Cherry Bark, Victoria Motto Dark Paprika, Victorian motto taupe suede. Weeks Dye Works Cocoa. Weeks Dye Works Bark. 
a week's putty and a week's Oscar. So let me hold all of those up. And again, I don't have one of those rings. <laughs> so I got the tawny browns and the lighter greens, all kinds of different shades of greens. And then they have, um, that's for the snowman's nose. <laughs> oh, I just think it's going to be so pretty. So I'm going to do it on that, uh, fabric that I showed you that I got in the haul, which is the 26 count natural from White Cult. And then we have all of these. Isn't that going to be pretty? I think it's going to be so pretty with all those colors. And if you are interested, I can go ahead and write down my conversion. I have, um, I have a little bit more colors than what they called for, because I'm going to put them in a few different things. So if you would like that, um, my conversion for the snow village, I would be happy to send that to you. And I think the colors are pretty good, but I'll go ahead and insert some shots just in case, because I know the light from the window is kind of blowing that out. But that is going to be my snow village. And thank you so much to uh, the various channels, because one of the other things I learned, I think Nicole does it from Nicole's Needleworks. Uh, she's really good about, she pulls from her stash. And while I don't have a whole lot of stash, I do have some now. And she um, usually pulls from her stash to do her projects. And then also Barbara's daughter does the same thing. And, and um, also uh, Deb from Country Stitcher. So I appreciate your inspiration, Deb. I really loved your project and I think I'm gonna give it a go. So that is going to be Snow Village. And then another one I got, now this was kind of another stashy haul, but this is by Ink Circles and it is called Damask Square. And you can see that here, I'll go ahead and again, I'll probably put in a uh, shot for you so you can see it better. And let's see, this one, it calls for linen, two threads of linen on 30 count, but I went ahead and I uh, was on the Facebook groups. If you don't know about the Facebook groups, like Stash Unload and all that, yeah, it'll be down the link haven, trust me. <laughs> um, I got something, it was a 14 by nine piece, 32 count Belfast dirty linen. So I chose that to go ahead and do it. So this is dirty linen and one of the other, um, silks that I got from the craft gallery was the Dinky Dyes Natural Silk. So that's just a slight cream color. And I think that's going to be absolutely gorgeous. I'm not doing any kind of other alterations. I got, you know, a, a pretty dark fabric, I think, and then the silk for that one. So I am going to try to do that on here. Now on this one also, I may try over one. I think that's um, what I'm going to do because my fabric was a little bit smaller and I really want to try doing over one on linen. So that's going to be my thought process here. And so hopefully that'll turn out. So I will go ahead and um, do some shots for you there. So that's the Damask Square by Ink Circles. And I love that pattern. I think that is so cool. So the next project that I kitted up is by Plum Street Samplers, and this is My Peaceful Home. It is the little drum, which I absolutely love. I love the colors on this. I love how pastel it is. And I chose to do this on the Weeks Dye Works. I believe it's, let's see, 36, yes. 36 count Weeks Dye Works Platinum. I think that's gonna be perfect for that little drum. And then here are my colors. I did change some up because I did want the variegation. So they did have some suggestions. And then again, I just kind of matched up what I had in my stash. And here are the colors for that. And I don't know how you guys do this. This is hard. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah. Did not look pretty. I love the, some of them are little, little pops of color. So you can kind of see them all there. So those are the colors that are going to go on my drum. 
and that's the peaceful home. So I got that one kitted up and ready to go. And I have two more, two more to show you. Uh, while I was at the craft gallery, I saw, <laughs> I saw this one, words of, words of wisdom, be kind. And she had already had it framed and hanging on the wall and I absolutely loved it. And so this is, it says, if you can't be kind, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> this is so me. This is so me right here. I love this one. <laughs> and they had already had it kitted up. I do not know the count on this, but it looks similar uh, to the 32 count natural that I have going on. I think it is maybe um, a white tote because it's got that orange border, but correct me if I'm wrong. I'm still learning, but this is a little bit creamier color than the one that I had uh, so but I love it this is linen and then I have pulled a few of the colors I'm still looking for a few more uh, but that's kind of what I have on the start of that those three colors there so that is if you can't be kind be quiet <laughs> and let's see that is by Pine Mountain Designs yeah, I had to do that one. And then uh, along those lines, kind of a little bit about my personality is I have a little snarky streak. <laughs> I know, shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> but let me get it over here. It's a little bit far within reach here. And um, so in the diamond painting community, we have the crafty heifer, which is a term of endearment for my friend Marissa. Um, she lives in Texas, so obviously they have a theme of cows and so forth. And then also uh, with Rachel Ray in the diamond painting, and she's another one that got into floss too. Uh, she loves sparkly unicorns. So there's a thing with some llama corns, and I mean, it's a whole, it's a whole big story. But anyway, I saw this pattern and I had to get it. It is <laughs> by Peacock and Fig, and it is called Miserable Cow. <laughs> And it says, be a sparkly unicorn and not a miserable cow. <laughs> I had to get it, you guys. I had to. <laughs> so I am in the middle of finding uh, all the floss for this one. And I do not have the fabric yet. I might do it on some of that extra natural linen because I, it seems like I've been kidding that up with everything. And oh, let's see. I think you can see them. There's just a bunch of uh, different grays in this one. So nothing really special, but yeah, that this, this, I may have to do this three or four times and send that off to quite a few people. <laughs> because, you know, we need a little snark in our life and we need a little bit of uh, encouragement to be kind, I, I would think. So one last uh, chart that I'm working on kitting up. I don't have it kitted up all the way. I do not have the fabric yet. I'm not quite sure what I want to do it on because I do want to do it on something lighter. I have not ventured out into any of the dyed fabrics except for weeks, so I'm kind of got my eye on that. But this is by Plum Street Samplers, and it's called the Tired Trio. And my daughter loves sloths. <laughs> and I just think this is so cute. So I'm just starting to kit it up. And so I have a few of these. Uh, there is a one that I picked from Victorian Motto. And it's called Artichoke Pink. And it is a sweet variegation on that one. I really like that one. And then the, these three are DMCs. So I'm just starting to pull my threads for that one. Um, but I think the pink one is spot on. I really like that. So... That is my crafty haul, and I know that this video is probably going to be getting pretty long. I do have some other things to show you, but um, I'm not sure how often I'll do the floss tubes, but I will go ahead and put a playlist in my channel because I know not everybody is a diamond painter, but if you do come to my channel or click the subscribe button, I will have a playlist just for the floss tube. So you can go ahead and play that if you so choose. And I just want to say thank you again to everybody and especially to my local needle 
workshop because they were wonderful. They spent a lot of time with me and uh, really showed me the ropes. But since you have stayed the song in the video, I want to give you a little bit of sneak peek of the craft gallery. It is a wonderful shop. If you are in the Ohio area anytime or live close by, you have to go there. You absolutely need to go there. So I want to give two thumbs up Paula to um, Paula and Carlton, the owners. They were so nice to me and I just love them. Like it is so true what Megan has said about her local Nina workshop. She kind of found her people there and she's made lifelong friends. And that's exactly how I feel about um, Paula and Carlton. They were so sweet to me and I did have a haul. I mean, I bought a lot of the things and that they were so sweet to me and showing me how to do things and telling me about certain needles. Like we're talking ball needles. And, um, also I got some of the Paula's or is it Paula's needles? The gold, um, recommended needles to try out. So they, they were just wonderful and I can't wait to go back. Like I, I had a smile on my face the whole next day. And so my husband said, of course he'll take me back there because he was my chauffeur. And if you are going there and you are married, um, or you have a significant other, they even have a recliner that they can sit in while, um, your, your partner shops. So <laughs> Very smart marketing there, but I will go ahead and insert the clip of the shop and then I will close. If you came on here and you enjoyed what I showed or uh, any kind of tips that I could possibly send you to other YouTubers for training, I just hope that if you are starting out like 
I am, that you'll find a lot of these tips helpful in um, going down this rabbit hole because the cavern is deep and wide, let me tell you. And sometimes you need a guide to go through there as a new stitcher. So uh, I will see you in my next video. Bye, Flossie.